Hey, it's Carl Thompson here from StorageCraft. Thank you for attending this webinar today. Uh, we'll be discussing the best practice for disaster recovery planning. So this is a webinar, um, everyone is on mute. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please type them in um, and I will review that at the end of the webinar and we'll have some Q&A time for anyone that's got any questions on anything that we've talked about. Um, yeah, so we are recording the webinar. It will be available on our StorageCraft APAC YouTube channel as well. Um, myself, uh, I've been with StorageCraft for about four and a half years um, and worked in the IT industry um, prior to that for previous 10 years um, and have a lot of experience with, um, you know, particularly the Shadow Protect solution that we'll be talking a lot about today. So the first thing that I always like to start these sort of discussions with is actually understanding what the problem is. Why is business continuity planning uh, so critical and obviously how will best practice fit into that and what we should be doing. So the first thing is understanding where are the actual problems happening. We've got operational and application failures. This sort of 80% um, is much more likely to happen. This is, you know, ransomware would sit across this, human error, um, Windows updates, changes to systems, upgrades, application configuration, that kind of thing. That's far more likely to happen than a hardware failure, particularly today, far less likely, um, particularly if you've got high availability, you're clustering and that kind of thing as well. Um, security power, but even natural disasters, a natural disaster is just 3%. So what that really tells me is that, you know, when, particularly when we start talking about cloud DR and offsite and DR locations separate to our, our primary um, production environment, is that 97% of the time, we actually just want rapid recovery right back to where the, you know, where the machine was originally running. You know, if we recover off-site, that may introduce you know, complexities around networking and fail over and fail back and stuff. So obviously we can automate as much of that and make it as easy as possible, but we actually just want to rapidly recover. So when we're talking disaster recovery, we want to understand that, you know, there's a lot of different backup products out there, but how can we implement them to recover quickly? So some of the challenges people have with this is that 85% of critical systems are not backed up adequately. Now fortunately with Shadow Protect, it's a full image of the system, which means when we restore that, we put the whole thing back as it was. There's no further recovery process that's, that's required. Uh, our backups all implement um, you know, best practice VSS uh, backups so that way they're in a consistent known state. So that's really important. The next challenge a lot of people face is data growth rates. So obviously data growth rate means a bunch of things, right? It's more storage for the primary storage, but also more secondary storage for that backup location. It's also taking longer to do backups. Now fortunately with Shadow Protect, it does what's called real-time incremental sector tracking. So what this means is once we've done that full backup, we're tracking in real time the changes so that we don't have to go and interrogate a massive multi-terabyte system every time we want to do a backup. So we can deal with that challenge really well. Restores that fail up to 40%. So that's an alarming rate and that really means that we need to be testing. And this falls into disaster recovery planning because the easiest way to test this is actually to perform recoveries. So we're going to show you how we can automate that process. We'll talk a bit about that, but also um, you know, how to best configure or design an infrastructure to leverage that. The other thing is ransomware. So obviously, as the rise in ransomware um, becomes such a major problem, this is superseding a lot of other best practices in terms of you know, your recovery objectives, because this is you know, more likely to happen, the size of your servers are now much larger, so the recovery time could take longer in traditional or legacy technologies. So this is all really important. Um, I saw this one on my LinkedIn feed yesterday. A friend uh, shared this one. Um, a Perth-based uh, company um, data was hit, and all their backups were um, compromised as well, and they didn't have off-site backup. And uh, this particular bloke that shared this doesn't work in um, backup or DR anymore, but his comment was that everyone should have the 3 two, one rule. So I actually thought about that today and I thought, well actually StorageCraft had quite a good blog article a while ago I saw talking about the five fundamentals of backup and business continuity planning. Protect data at every level, backup your backups, store backups in multiple locations, set logical recovery goals, and make data security a priority. So I actually just want to pull up um, this article. I'm going to reference this a little bit as we go through architecturally um, you know, some of the best things to do. 
but this one here particularly, back up your backups, um, you know, the three, two, one rule. So we'll talk a little bit about that, what your options are, particularly around the storage craft solution set. Um, obviously, protecting your data and, you know, in terms of security and stuff is, you know, obviously your, your first line of protection and, and your backups might become your last line of protection, but uh, these are all things that need to come into play. As part of that three, two, one rule, we'll talk about storing your backups in multiple locations. You want to set your recovery point and your recovery time objectives so that you know, you know, particularly again, when you're talking large amount of data, if you're basing it around a traditional restore, that will take a long time. So understanding what those business needs are enables us to, you know, invest the appropriate uh, infrastructure required to do a, a speedy recovery um, and, and make data security a priority. So obviously um, that is, again, uh, best practice. I've actually attached um, one of these um, guides already as a handout to this webinar, so um, I'll actually bring that up in a minute as well. So these are some good things to think about. Now, um, in terms of storage craft solution, uh, particularly with Shadow Protect's offering, uh, obviously starting with a reliable backup is really important. Having our included shadow control to centrally manage all of my machines and, and all of my customers, it's fully multi-tenancy. Off-site replication is a really important part, but the whole thing pivots on recovery. There's no point backing up if we can't recover, um, or if, particularly if we can't recover quickly, it might make those backups you know, not that useful. Um, and obviously we should protect across physical, virtual, Windows and Linux, and cloud-based recovery is um, a great solution that covers the board of these scenarios. Now, um, Shadow Protect SPX is our latest flagship version of our Shadow Protect, which has been around for well over a decade. The X now stands for cross-platform. So this has been out for uh, a couple of years now, winning some amazing awards around our virtual boot instant recovery technology um, and a fantastic solution that is complemented with our cloud-based disaster recovery as a service. So what this looks like is you've got the Shadow Protect agent that sits across on-site your physical and virtual environments. It backs up to some storage on-site. Now this could just could be another disk because we're a disk-to-disk -disk backup. Uh, it could be a USB drive, could be a NAS, but ideally might be a dedicated backup server. Now by having a, a, a Windows box um, installed to receive these backups means we can run the free image manager software. This allows Shadow Protect to do what's called continuous incrementals, or what I'd say is incrementals forever. This is really cool because it means when we start looking at replicating off-site, we don't have to worry about these full backups happening every week or every month. We can deal with that really easily, and on top of that, um, we can have far greater retention. We don't have to get into all of this complicated dedupe and WAN optimization and all of that stuff. So Image Manager is a fantastic free tool that complements Shadow Protect. That would be installed on the backup server, and this is going to control a lot to do with what we're talking about today in terms of the backups. So the first thing Image Manager um, can do is verify my consolidated retention. As part of verification, we have what's called Advanced Verify option, and when you turn that on, that will instantly virtual boot the backup every day, week, or month you choose. It takes a screenshot after a period of time for you to show you that the machines are successfully booting. So virtual boot's a great tool that could run on a backup server, is included free with Image Manager. But really, the idea is if something went wrong in production, we can instantly virtual boot on this backup server to recover that, that backup. Now, with virtual boot, it doesn't restore all of the data. It boots straight off the backup image, so it's a very quick way to recover a server of any size. Virtual boot also supports booting directly back into Hyper-V and VMware, so you don't have to have a dedicated backup server. You can leverage your existing production infrastructure. Another technology that is built in and now included free with Image Manager is called Head Start Restore. So as the backups come in, we pre-stage them into a standby Hyper-V or VMware environment, enabling us instead of virtual boot perhaps to rapidly cut over to a fully provisioned VM in a standby state. So that's another great option included, and as you'll see here, this at the moment is all focused around on-site recovery. The next step is leveraging Image Manager's built-in off-site replication. So we have the ability to replicate to the storage craft cloud for full DR as a service. You could go to your own remote site using our proprietary shadow control replication, or uh, sorry, shadow stream, I should say, replication, or our included free intelligent FTP replication. So you can send it to your own data center or to your own remote DR site, um, or you could leverage the free S3 connector. So that way we can send a copy of our backups into S3 for archive. So we have a site disaster. 
the idea is in the StorageCraft cloud, log into a web page, single click of a policy, and we start booting up your entire infrastructure. If it's your own remote DR site, you've got your virtual boot or head start restore options. If it's an S3, that's more of your archive, not so much DR, but you could suck those images back out and perform a recovery with them as well. So that's the solution giving you that type of coverage on site and off site. You need to think about the backup server. How can we build something that's running Hyper-V or the free Oracle VirtualBox? It could be a Windows PC. So I'll attach another handout in a minute that uh, talks about different ways to design a backup server, if you will. Um, otherwise, again, if you've got production Hyper-V VMware environments, look at where those backups are sitting. You know, if they're on a USB drive, it's not really going to be the best way to recover quickly. If they're on a NAS, you know, a lot of NAS is, you know, running at sort of Linux and the file sharing protocol, not the best for a virtual boot either, but a dedicated Windows server, you know, that's true SMB3, we're going to have the best performance, um, you know, particularly direct attached storage to that backup server is going to be an optimal place for a, um, you know, Hyper-V or, or Oracle VirtualBox recovery, otherwise VMware will boot directly over the SMB network, which is fantastic. So in terms of licensing, really all you need is to license the Shadow Protect software. So the, the original virtual uh, machines, we can do socket-based, monthly subscription or perpetual licensing for physical and virtual machines. Um, the image manager, the virtual boot, the head start restore is all included. Off-site replication to your own DR site is included as well, as well as all of that technology you might like to run there in terms of virtual boot, head start restore, and shadow control. Uh, the storage craft cloud is an add-on service. Uh, and S3 is an included connector, but you would have to uh, obviously pay for that S3 storage, uh, which I think is around 25 Aussie dollars a terabyte. So very affordable, giving you a copy of those backups for long-term archival. So in terms of that sort of 3 to one rule uh, we looked at on the StorageCraft blog, what does that really mean? Let's dig into that. It means keep three copies of any data you can't afford to lose. So obviously the Shadow Protect Images is a full image of the system. It's containing you know, our business requirements, all of that data. So it says store on two storage mediums, hard drive and USB drive, and NAS, and cloud server, etc. And one copy should be stored off site. So let's look at this. Let's break this down and figure out what our options are. So number one is obviously your backup repository on site, the initial place where all the Shadow Protect Images are going. Image manager could be pushing that out for standby virtual disk, so that's head start restore. That could be a second copy because it's it's extracting those backups into a separate um, DR environment, I guess. Uh, a third copy on site could be uh, onto a fixed NAS or rotating USB drives um, or another Windows or, or Linux server on site. So any sort of SMB path uh, or NAS or, or rotating USB drives. Now, what the cool thing here is that it's image manager pushing it out to two and three. It's not another backup that's hampering my production server. My production server is just doing that one full image that it did at the start and then up to 96 backups a day, these tiny little increments. And image manager will deal with replicating copies of these backup chains wherever you want to go. So obviously that covers a couple of options. We then need to start looking at having a second copy off site. So we've got the storage craft cloud services. Now, the key thing to understand here is that StorageCraft Cloud Services is very similar in a way to Head Start Restore. It is not another copy of the backup images, yet it's more of a recovery point that we can rapidly recover the server to. Obviously, you'll have some sort of lag window or retention point within that, but it's not giving us a complete copy of the backup chain. So that's why it's always good to have another copy of the backup chain rather than just in the initial on-site repository if you need to go back in time. So obviously replicating using included IntelliJ FTP to your own remote DR site or into a data center would be an option, or replicating to Amazon S3. Um, so there's six different scenarios here. Obviously that could be extended with more USB drives or additional on-site storage, but there's a lot of different scenarios. Um, we'll see some partners uh, that replicate to their data center and then image manager will replicate it to another data center to give them that extended copy and coverage or geographical redundancy. So there's a lot of different scenarios to think about, but obviously, you know, the last thing we want to happen is those shadow protect images to get hit. Now we're going to talk next about how we can secure that as best as possible, but part of that best practice is to replicate off-site. Now obviously the storage craft cloud is not retaining the same copy or format of that backup images, but we can rapidly recover the machine within that retention you know, period that you've defined. 
uh, it would still be recommended to have a separate copy of that chain, whether it's off-site or on-site, uh, you know, allowing you to repair a backup chain and not perhaps have to take another full backup and start seeding that back to the cloud. So that's the kind of best practice. You know, one should be on the right-hand side uh, at a minimum and, you know, one to two on-site, um, depending on where you're wanting your, your copies to be. So that's something to think about. Now, best practices for securing those backups. So we start off by saying you should encrypt your backups. So we want those backups encrypted. That is actually a requirement for the storage craft cloud. We'll only accept them if they are encrypted. But more importantly, um, you know, if, if something was to get access to those images, they've got full access to all that data. So we want that encrypted, secured, so that no one can access the contents of those backups. What that doesn't mean is it doesn't mean something like ransomware can't go and encrypt it again or corrupt the files. So we need to secure the location. We want to protect the local network share that the backups are on. No user on the network should have access to that. It should be locked down to a user that image managers and shadow protectors is authenticating directly to. And again, restrict that shared folder access as well. So the NTFS permissions of that folder, for example, to really secure that data. Uh, review SMB, so obviously SMB version 1 um, on your network is, is there's no one flaws there and vulnerabilities. So we want to lock that down and use off-site and cloud-based replication. So one of the cool things with Image Manager is it immediately verifies the backups. It then periodically re-verifies them. So it's constantly checking. It will only send stuff off-site once. Once it's been sent off-site, it will never try and send it again. And additionally, it will only send stuff once it's been verified as OK. So if my backups did get infected on site, Image Manager will not send or replicate that to the remote site. Now, that's really important. There's a lot of um, replication technologies available, I guess. You know, you could have NAS to NAS replication or third-party tools that replicate stuff to a remote site. But the risk is, what if those images get corrupted and that technology tries to send it to the secondary site? So Image Manager has that capability to prevent that type of problem from happening. It's a really great way to, you know, basically isolate that remote site. It's authenticating into a separate FTP service or, a, or a encrypted cloud. Um, it's not vulnerable to a local compromise, you know, SMB type, type attack. So I think that's really important as well. That second sort of off-site chain is totally independent from the primary one. So virtual boot, obviously from a disaster recovery perspective, this is one of the key ways to rapidly virtualize your backups. Regardless if it's 100 gig or four terabytes, we can instantly boot those backups using virtual boot. So we can boot directly into vSphere, directly into Hyper-V. So with vSphere, you require a vCenter server 6.0 update to or newer. Um, so you're gonna need uh, Essentials Plus or newer or, or sorry or, or um, greater licensing. So Essentials Plus, Standard, uh, Enterprise, etc., are all going to include um, the vCenter server along with the cluster requirement. Uh, for Hyper-V, it will boot into any uh, Windows Server 2012 R2 with Hyper-V enabled, 2016 server, or Windows 10 Pro with the Hyper-V role. So it's a great way to leverage existing Hyper-V infrastructure or a Windows 10 PC or a Windows server as a backup DR server or with Oracle VirtualBox. It'll support older Windows servers, Linux machines or other older Windows desktop operating systems as well where Hyper-V might not be available. So really flexible. Um, you know, you could have a Windows PC with a mirrored, you know, a couple of terabyte disks in it and that could actually virtualize, you know, a couple of machines if it had to, you know, if it was an i7 with enough RAM might virtual boot one or two servers for a small site. So it does really scale right down and then obviously scales the other way when you start looking at much larger tier one hypervisor options. Great for testing, great for system recovery, great for migrations, no additional licensing required. So we've got thousands of people that you should have protect, but are they designing it in a way that can leverage virtual boot would be the key question is, are you leveraging the best out of what you get with shadow protect? So um, the VMware solution is actually one of our um, best virtual boot technologies. Um, it's, we've certified at a very high level with VMware where we've got a pattern and filter that sits in the vSphere framework and talks directly to the backup. So it's a really fantastic recovery experience because it boots, VMware boots directly off our image. It doesn't have to convert it through a secondary VM process or anything, uh, which a lot of other uh, products have to do. 
Uh, and, but this is also very similar to what we can do with Hyper-V in terms of Hyper-V and VirtualBox talk directly to the Shadow Protect backup. There's no conversion process uh, or other VM required to, to recover. So some of the key things is obviously consistent sector-based backups. We're getting these VSS-aware backups at a sector level, meaning very fast, very small backups. This enables us to back up as frequent as every 15 minutes with zero impacts. It's not disrupting users. It's not stunning or pausing or hanging the VM because it's an in-guest snapshot. With virtual boot and head start restore, we can recover in minutes. Physical virtual support, image management for all the verification, automation, the replication is, is really a key part of that technology. And with shadow control, you've got centralized management. So on the back of the, the Shadow Protect backups, we've got the Storage Craft Cloud. This is the ability to replicate a copy of your backups to the Storage Craft Cloud in Australia. It has got nine, uh, sorry, five nines of uptime, 99.999. Um, it's a very um, scaled architecture, fault tolerant, built specifically for disaster recovery. You can log in and customize different machines based on a service level. And obviously, Cloud Premium uh, is our full DR offering, um, and that allows you basically a single click failover. So you can say, you know, out of these five servers, you know, my domain controller must boot first, give that a few minutes, then start booting up my other servers, and that could scale to 20, 30, 50 servers. Very easily, you create a policy, a boot order, and you've got a single click. Now, a key part of that is around the advanced network options, so pre-configuring your VPN, IPsec, um, open VPN, port forwardings, DHCP reservations, public IP requests, all that kind of stuff is really powerful enabling a comprehensive failover and you've got all of that control yourself in the portal. You don't have to call anyone to invoke that DR and you can test it at any time. One of the other key um, technologies that we have separate to Shadow Protect is our cloud backup for Office 365 and G Suite. This is a cloud to cloud solution where our portal connects directly over secure APIs to Office 365 or G Suite and securely backs up this data. It does it every eight hours, that's three times a day. And in that single portal, you can instantly search an entire tenant for your, you know, your e-discovery and within seconds restore email, you know, granular recovery. So very powerful for email, SharePoint, contacts, calendar, OneDrive, rapid search because everything's indexed on the fly and the recovery takes just seconds. So that is a great solution that is just as well at risk of things like ransomware because there's the risk that, you know, bring your own device, people are at home, they're accessing SharePoint or OneDrive, there's a risk of things happening outside of the corporate network where we want rapid granular recovery of that data. Another uh, solution that's actually come in uh, relatively new to StorageCraft um, since actually January last year is OneBlocks. This gives us the ability to scale out primary and secondary storage. Um, it's basically a NAS chassis um, that has enterprise features like DG compression, encryption, and replication. You put your own disks into it, so I'm not charging a, um, a premium on disks. You can mix and match different SATA SAS drives. Um, and this has some, a lot of cool stuff built in too. So one of the things I really like is the CDP, the continuous data protection. What this will do is the appliance itself will do snapshots every 10 seconds for the first hour. Those snapshots are immutable, it then changes to minute, then hourly and daily, etc. And what this enables us to do is even on our backup images, we could have a very short retention, but we could actually have um, storage level uh, snapshots that can't be infected, it's entirely immutable. Uh, but this is also great to offload you know, your primary file services directly onto the storage that includes its own snapshotting for that backup um, process and it frees up the storage on your SAN. And the great thing with OneBlock is it's entirely scale out. So as you add a new disk in or add a new chassis, it just extends that overall storage in seconds. So another great solution. So just before I finish up, um, let's just see how I'm going for time. Um, we've kind of got a few minutes left. So I'm just, what I'm going to do is just add in, um, I've got the handout there for, um, the ransomware, if you all want to grab that. I'm just going to go in and add in another handout here, and it will be called um, Backup Disaster Recovery Appliance Flyer. So I'm just uploading that one now to the webinar handouts. This is a great uh, document that helps you sort of understand maybe the, the particularly for the smaller customers, a, a good affordable way to build uh, an effective backup and disaster recovery server. Um, yeah, but I think, um, 
those are the two sort of key things I wanted to, to leave you with today. If anyone's got any questions, um, I will answer that now. Um, you'll all get an email with a copy of the recording. Uh, it will also be on our StorageCraft APAC YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, thanks again for uh, attending this webinar today. Hopefully um, it's given you some good ideas and best practice on what you should be doing with your backups and, and you know, understanding how we can recover quickly and leveraging the tools that are there. Um, don't see any questions coming through just now, so I'll just give you another minute. If anyone's got anything they want to ask or see, I'm happy to bring up a, a live demo environment if um, anyone would like to see anything we've talked about. Um, but again, thank you. Um, again, my name's Carl Thompson. I'm a sales engineer currently based in New Zealand, um, looking after our APAC region. All right, I'm going to end it there today. Thank you again.